Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ask Andrew, where each week I answer a film-related question submitted by you, our BMFI viewers. This week's question is, what does montage mean? Well, montage has a few different meanings depending on the context in which it is used. Most broadly and originally, and when I say originally, I mean sort of decades past, uh, it was a synonym for editing. And in fact, if you look at some credits for old films, uh, particularly old films made in countries outside the US, uh, you will often see uh, montage used or mentioned in uh, the credits, listed in the credits, and it's usually the, uh, related to the credit for the film's editor. So sometimes it's used uh, sort of as a broad general synonym for editing, but that's not typically the case, and it's certainly not typically the case in recent decades and in the U.S. or other English-speaking uh, countries. Um, another meaning for montage, and one that is probably the most common, is as a reference to a particular sequence. You may have heard uh, the phrase montage sequence, and montage is a synonym for montage sequence. And what this is, is a series of shots edited together to convey a broader idea. Uh, it's sort of a way of editing together a series of small or short individual shots that by themselves don't communicate much. They certainly don't communicate the larger intention of the whole sequence, but when put together, they do. And the kind of classic example of this is from kind of classic Hollywood movies when they wanted to show, uh, you see this often in romantic comedies, they wanted to show the couple um, having a night out on the town. So you would see uh, a shot of them getting out of a taxi and running into a restaurant and then, you know, a shot of them eating and then a shot of them running out of the restaurant and a shot of them walking down the street and ducking into a nightclub and then a shot of them dancing and then a shot of them raising champagne and then a shot of them, you know, um, get getting in a cab to go home and each of those shots by themselves sort of indicates or, or communicates the discrete idea the sort of denotative idea you know that is shown they are going into a restaurant they are drinking champagne they are getting out of a cab but when all those are put together um, and typically they would be put together uh, a number of edits that would come quickly, meaning short shots. And usually you wouldn't hear any sort of dialogue. You would typically hear sound effects or background noise or music sort of underlying the whole uh, sequence. But when they're, when they're all put together, it conveys a larger or broader idea, such as this couple had a night on the town. Um, and you'll, you know, you see this uh, other times when there's uh, a backstage musical and the, the company's getting ready to put on the show and you'll see a bunch of quick shots of, of aspects of rehearsal and set building and, you know, choreography and things like that, that sort of show that they're, you know, they've covered their rehearsal or things like that. And, and that's a montage sequence and it's really a collection of, of small, relatively simple or insignificant shots that when grouped together convey a larger idea. And that's the most common usage when we talk about montage. Um, the third uh, meaning of montage is related to the second one, but is much more historically and um, technically specific. And that is, a particular type of montage that was first devised and made popular uh, or popularly implemented um, in uh, Soviet filmmaking uh, in the 19 teens and 20s and for some time after. Uh, and this is often called sort of a Soviet montage or more broadly kind of ideological montage. And here we're talking about uh, the work um, most notably 
of filmmakers like Sergei Eisenstein, who's most famous for uh, the movie Battleship Potemkin, but who really believed that filmmaking was an ideological endeavor and believed that um, editing with a theory behind your, your choices in editing could really um, convey uh, ideological struggle and change minds um, in sort of a, a propagandistic or, or perhaps even deeper way than most propaganda tends to or, or thinks it can. Um, and uh, Eisenstein was a very firm believer that uh, montage uh, was the way to depict in cinema the sort of political dialectical struggle that um, Marxism and, and Soviet communism was trying to um, convey and you know explain and spread throughout the world and, and the struggle that they were ultimately um, intending or hoping to win. And basically what this uh, what this approach means is that it, it's kind of like an embody embodiment of the notion of the sort of the political or ideological dialectic. So you have a shot that represents an idea uh, called the thesis. Um, then you have following that another shot representing the contrast of that idea uh, called the antithesis. And then the next shot is the sort of results of those two things being put together or clashing. And that is known as the synthesis. And Eisenstein would construct sequences in his movies using this approach, this logic. And its most famous uh, you know, usage is in the Odessa Step sequence, uh, Battleship Potemkin, which uh, is a, a very famous uh, sequence in film and, and has been sort of um, referenced by other filmmakers, um, most popularly um, Brian De Palma in his uh, movie The Untouchables. Um, but uh, what you basically have in the scene is you have the um, you have the sort of uh, the 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 czarist forces. Um, are shown to be these sort of cold and merciless soldiers who have been sent to Odessa to put down what has been described uh, in the film as a sort of peasant revolt or citizen revolt. And on the famous Odessa steps, you have the citizens of Odessa, the so-called peasants, sort of working their way up the steps, trying to plead their case. And you have the... Um, uh, the soldiers going down the steps and what Eisenstein does in this sequence is he shows basically the massacre of these citizens by the by the soldiers um, but he does it in a series of sort of smaller interactions that kind of show you know the the citizens or representative of the citizens the soldiers representative of the soldiers and then there was the aftermath of that clash which is not pretty um, because it's it's a massacre uh, in the film. And uh, that's the most famous example of Eisenstein using this sort of, you know, political dialectical montage to really try to make, you know, almost to a didactic extent, uh, political and ideological statements w within his film. Um, if you Google um, Odessa Steps scene or Battleship Potemkin, uh, Odessa Steps, you know, things like that, you'll find this clip, it's out there and you'll be able to get a, a sense of, of what I mean. But um, that's a very specific uh, use of montage and uh, it, it's a very famous one and that approach to filmmaking, though not necessarily the ideology, ideology behind it, but that approach to filmmaking was, has been tremendously influential um, on filmmakers moving forward because it really showed the power of the sort of greater message behind putting different shots together, sort of, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts kind of idea, 
which is what that was all about. And in a sense, if, if you think about it, the sort of second type of montage, though not as sort of politically fraught or, or serious, um, that's also the, the, the message of that, that the sum is, I'm sorry, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So those are some of the things that people mean when they say montage. And if this is a topic you find really interesting, I, I think you should check out the Odessa step sequence from Battleship Potemkin. Um, and I think you'll get a sense of, of what I mean. It's, you know, ideology aside uh, and the fact that the, the clip is now over a hundred years old, um, it is, uh, it's a really um, powerful example of filmmaking and uh, a very interesting sort of exercise in what very purposeful, detailed, thoughtful uh, filmmaking uh, can do. So uh, check it out if you're so interested. Um, I misspoke a moment ago. I, it's not over 100 years old. It's about 100 years old. Um, but in any case, um, still very striking filmmaking uh, given that time and the technology and resources available uh, to Eisenstein when he was making it. So that is today's or this week's Ask Andrew video. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. If you have a film related question you would like to see if I can answer or try to answer, um, please uh, let me know. You can do that by going to BrynMarFilm.org, visiting the Film Studies Online section and finding the Ask Andrew page where you can uh, submit a question right there. And uh, who knows, maybe next time I'll be answering a question you sent in. <laughs>